Welcome to Australia. Oh, I'm having a wonderful time here. I was going to say, I bet you've been asked that a lot. How are you enjoying your time here in Australia? Oh, well, Perth has got uh, the King's Park, which is, what, number six in the world on the list of, of wonderful parks? Yes, so number I six. And explored that, uh, the elevated walkway that takes you up into the, the higher level as it goes through the trees. Mm -hmm. and the treetop walk. An area of incredible diversity that everybody's trying to preserve. So I, I had a wonderful time yesterday. And if you ever do come back, we must take you down south to all the wine regions down there and the, the treetop walk, which is with over 100 feet in the air with all the big uh, carry trees and everything. It's amazing. Oh, that would be lovely. Something to. Now, you're actually here, of course, uh, for Supernova for the uh, art, right. and you're an author with some fantastic books. I'm a personal fan of the Farsia trilogy and the Live Ship uh, trilogies and the Dragon Keepers and all that. I absolutely love them all. One of the things, and you've got a new book coming out as well, don't you? Coming That's correct. very, very soon. Coming out in August. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I've been, and it's part of a trilogy as well, isn't it? That's right. It's the first book of the the, the Fitz and the Fool trilogy, and it's called Fool's Assassin. I can't wait to read that. Now, one of the things about your books is, I must say, I I actually get so absorbed into your books, but you you put your characters, your protagonists, through so much trouble. It, it, it almost seems sadistic. Do you, do, you, do you really enjoy doing it so when they triumph, they get something amazing out of it at the end? Or is it just because you're like, <laughs> it's like a George R.R. R. Martin, I'll kill you and I'll kill you. And <laughs> I think you follow where the, where the story stream goes. That um, uh, telling about, you know, I think what J.R.R. Tolkien said that, you know, pony rides in May sunshine don't make a very good tale. It's, very it's true. when you're encountering the trolls in the forest at night that things get exciting, and that's what, what makes the story, that's what people want to hear. So um, it's not that there aren't any quiet and peaceful parts of Fitz's life or Navarre's life, it's just that uh, that's the part that's very easy to skip over and, mm. and say, and then this is what happens. And, and do you find with as well, like like just with Fitz's life, for example, uh, when he's obviously not doing a lot and he's just sort of, you know, and the, like when he was in the forest and he was trying to live his life and the fool didn't want to come, but then he eventually did and had to pick him up. Do you, do you find that Fitz, uh, Fitz's character sort of gets himself? Because I remember reading that you sort of saying that Fitz puts himself into these situations. Yes, oh, definitely. It's, it's his personality flaw. He's, he can't, he's got a compulsion to go and almost get killed. Yeah, he, he puts himself in danger. He doesn't avoid anything. He just uh, uh, charges ahead. Sometimes he doesn't think very straight about what's going to happen next. And it's what makes him fun to write. And that was the other thing as well. You, your villains are absolutely, oh, they are so, you just want to strangle them. They're absolutely amazing. Are they based on anybody in real life? Not really. They're they're based on um, the fact that that most villains don't go around rubbing their hands and cackling with glee and saying I'm going to be evil because it's so fun. They they are the heroes of their own stories. If you ask them, they they have motivations. They have reasoning. They have uh, they they feel they're completely justified in what they're doing, and that's what makes somebody really scary is when they do feel justified in whatever horrible thing they're doing. And, and that makes them unstoppable too. And but again, you write them so well because I mean, I, I know every time I see this character on on the page any in any of the books, I'm just like, oh god, just just die, please. I hope someone just t takes an arrow to you and just tails you off. Um, now, as well with the um, with the last book with Fitz and the Fool, uh, there were, you alluded to these creatures that are through this through the, the stones, and mm -hmm. and it just sort of almost came out. And it was like as a quick foreshadowing, and then it was there, and then nothing else. And I went I went back all the books just to make sure I hadn't skipped something or missed something. So no, you, didn't, you didn't miss anything. I, I didn't miss any. anything. unfolding. So, okay, can you give us any exclusive, any like little tidbits about what these creatures are? Um, uh, if, if, uh, if, the, if the memory stone, and this is a huge spoiler, I don't know if I should do this. Uh, if, if you have a stone that holds memories, mm -hmm. and then you have portals that are made of this same stone. Okay. And that's as much as I'm going to say. So. You're killing us. You're killing us. You know that. Have to wait till well, August. Put it together. Put it together. <laughs> and so, as well, um, how long does it actually take you to write one of these books? One year. One year for each book. It's it's been a year for each book for a, a lot of years now, for something like twenty three years. And that doesn't mean that I'm almost always spot on with my deadline. I try very hard to be because when you 
when you're a month or two late, you have upset the whole train of events that happens at a publishing house. I mean, they've got somebody else's book coming in that should be edited in their slot, and suddenly you're muscling in on their slot and saying, oh, I'm late, here to mine. And the other thing I've done that's horrible is to actually be like um, twice as long as the manuscript was meant to be, which means that the editors are doing twice as much work, and the copy editors. But we appreciate and everybody it. associated with it. The fans appreciate twice as long manuscript, because that means we get more fits, more full, more, ni ni I can never pronounce the name, Niv Nivar. Nivara. I, I, yeah, you pronounce it differently in your head, you know. Do you, is there any chance of a movie at any point? I would love to see the Assassin's Trilogy turned into a movie. Um, there, there was, uh, we were optioned once, um, but as, as far as that, that's not something that the writer has any control over uh, in terms of, uh, I write the book and if a production company or a producer or uh, an independent came to me and said, we'd like the director to take an option on this, and then it's up to them to get that whole big machine turning because it is a huge machine with many, many people involved. Would you ever look at something like maybe Kickstarter or Indiegogo or something like that no. to actually get one of your one of your films no. up and running? And no, that that would be taking on so much work I would never write a book again. Because if you ever if you've ever sat through a movie and watched the credits roll at the end and roll and roll and roll, you understand that every single one of those people put in not eight hour days, but probably 14 or 20 hour days, sometimes for, for a, over a year, to, to get that from there to when it's on the screen. So would I want to take that on? I mean, that's that's like you know saying, gee, I think I'll go start a construction company. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's a tremendous amount of work. So no, we need to get, I'm not up for that. So we need to get either a big studio house or an independent producer to come to you and say, right, we're turning it into exactly, a movie. Exactly, exactly. Right. Just put it out there. And you, you've got your t homework now, Internet. <laughs> Do make this happen. Make it happen. <laughs> but look, that's absolutely amazing. And look, again, uh, I really am excited to just can't, can't wait till it comes out. Is it going to be coming out in August in Australia, or is it going yes. to be? Yes, it is. Excellent. And I will be back uh, to, in, to Australia in November. I'll be doing the, the Adelaide and the Brisbane uh, uh, supernovas. So um, I will be back then with the new book. So I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait. Look, thank you so much for joining us here today. And I, I'm super excited to get into this new novel. And then I'll be completely depressed when I have to wait another two years to, to see how it concludes. But I can't wait. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much.